That's where the truth is. Yeah, just from, from last week, this is another important slide here uh, about moral inability. This is really what total depravity means. It means we are morally unable to come to Christ apart from divine intervention, apart from the new birth. And remember, it means three things. Number one, man cannot do the good. We've seen that. Number two, man cannot even desire the good for the right reasons. Number three, man cannot understand the good, which we talked about last week. So let me just, I'm going to read, uh, this, again, it's extended quote from Spurgeon. This, but you can't beat Spurgeon on this. This is so well said. Um, listen to this. This is Spurgeon explaining moral inability. Remember last week, I tried to distinguish physical inability from moral inability, right? So God's not saying you're physically unable to do the right thing. He's saying what? You're morally unable because you love the wrong thing. So listen to this amazing quote from Spurgeon. At least I thought this was great. So, okay, it's a long quote. Stick with me. Here we go. Spurgeon says, you see a sheep. You know, it's going to be a good quote when you start like that. You see a sheep, how willingly it feeds upon the herbage. You never knew a sheep to sigh after meat. So sheep don't want the meat. It could not live on lion's food. Now bring me a wolf. And you ask me whether a wolf cannot eat grass, whether it cannot be just as docile and domesticated as the sheep. I answer no, because its nature is contrary thereunto. You say, well, it has ears and legs. Can it not hear the shepherd's voice and follow the shepherd wherever he leads? C could a wolf, if a wolf wanted to, could a wolf do just like a sheep and follow the shepherd? Yes. What's the, is it going to do that? No. Why? Because its nature repels against that, right? So listen, I answer certainly there is no physical cause why the wolf cannot do so, but its nature forbids. And therefore, I say it cannot do so. There will always be a marked distinction between the wolf and the sheep because there is a distinction in nature. Now, the reason why man cannot come to Christ is not because he cannot come so far as his body or his mere power of mind is concerned, but because his nature is so corrupt that he has neither the will nor the power to come to Christ unless drawn by the Spirit. But let me give you a better illustration. You see a mother with her baby in her arms. You put a knife in the mother's hand and you tell her to stab her baby to the heart. She replies, very truthfully, what? I can't. Don't, doesn't that make perfect sense of what he's saying? Is she physically able? Yes. Is she morally able? No. I cannot. Now, so far as her bodily power is concerned, she can if she pleases. There's the knife. There's the child. The child cannot resist, and she is quite sufficient in her strength uh, to immediately stab the child to its heart. But she is quite correct when she says she cannot do it. Her nature as a mother forbids her doing a thing from which her soul revolts hates. Simply because she is that child's mother, she feels she cannot kill it. It is even so with a sinner. Coming to Christ is so obnoxious to human nature that although so far as physical and mental forces are concerned, mid men could come to Christ if they would, it is strictly correct to say that they cannot and will not unless the Father who has sent Christ draws them to himself. Isn't, that's just that's really well so said from, from Spurgeon. So I think that's a good way to distinguish moral inability and physical uh, inability mm -hmm. there. 